Well, Nick Collier here again, and uh, we've got uh, fairly interesting, I mean, you know, okay, turning brake drums, not that interesting, but it's a very interesting process because these brake drums come out of a 1934 Austin, and it turns out that the brake drums are literally uh, riveted to the, to the wheel rim. Now, it does come unbolted here, but, uh, you know, this is where the tire goes right here. So there is no place that, the, that my customer could have gotten this cut. And it uh, turns out that I have a gap lathe, so we're going to pull the gap today. We're going to uh, mount our, uh, our brake hub here and uh, go ahead and turn the surface so that they have a nice clean brake surface. So uh, stick with me. We'll have some fun. Okay, looking at this hub. Uh, it looks to me like we can just barely grab it right around here. Oh, there's threads there. Mm, not so good. Hmm. Well, there's a little edge right beyond the threads. I'm going to have to clean that up and see if I can grab that edge or if it's just a, you know, kind of a mushy edge. The other thing we could do is come into the center and grab the center because these, uh, these bearings are completely shot. So, uh... I'm sure he's going to have to replace these, or I mean, she's going to have to replace them because uh, it's a brother and sister team that are rebuilding this, interestingly enough. So maybe we might be able to come into the center and uh, grab it. And uh, give me a minute. Let me figure this one out. All right, first thing we got is a mess on this bed. Uh, uh, it needs to be cleaned up from the last job. So... Uh, We'll just clean the ways off a little bit and uh, bring it back to something usable. All right. And I think what we can do, I'm not sure, but uh, let's just kind of put this rim up there and see what it can look like. I'm thinking we could, this is a two part gap bed. So there's one piece here that can come out, and then this piece here can come out. So uh, I'm thinking we can get this right in there. God, it's going to be close. I mean, maybe we can just use the uh, chuck that's on there. Let's go ahead and bring it in and see what we can kind of come up with. No, it's not going to work. So we're going to have to uh, use the smaller chuck. Spin that baby off until it breaks loose. Find a place to hang this. Thing gets heavier every time I grab it. We'll put the smaller chuck in there now.
Okay. Let's give it a try. I'm thinking we're going to grow right in there. We got plenty of room. All right, so all we got to do is drop that gap. Jeez, can we get to it? I don't think so. Okay, so we've got our Allen wrench. We've got to take out two Allen bolts, and they're Fairly easy once you get them loosened up. Okay. All right, we might have to take both sides out. Okay, let's see what we can do here. I think it's all going to be loose. Well, the side we don't want to come out is loose. There we go. The side we don't care that whether it comes out or not is loose. The other side might be a whole different ball game. And since we're here, we may as well just leave them out. And uh, I want to put the bolts back in just to keep garbage from falling into the bolt holes. Okay, and then maybe something in the uh, little uh, taper pin holes. A little piece of tissue paper here. Or in this case, paper towel. All right, now, let's see if we can get this thing to true up. You in a different position all right that's a little better now what we're going to do is come in and and grip the uh the threads so what i want to do is uh instead of just hitting it straight on the threads i'm going to get a couple of pieces of aluminum to give myself a little buffer You're still with me. Let's drop that in there. Not too bad. It's going to hit those bolts. 
go get some smaller bolts in there. Alright, this is going to be impossible to do because I can't get in there. So I think what we're going to do, we'll take a little tape and tape these in place. Let's see what we can do now. That looks good. I'd say we're in good shape. So and then we come back in here with the bell center and uh, and go ahead and uh, and center out on the uh, on the old uh, bearing cone, which is pretty well rusted out, but it still will work. Okay. Oops. Let's get some oil on these ways. Well, that's going to be a long stretch. How far can we get this out there? And get it out to about there. Well, I, you know, long boring bar will probably do it. Let's give that a try. I don't know. May not make it. Come on. That's it right there. That's the end. All right. So now what we have to do. Well, we've got another quarter inch or so. Still not enough. Hmm. Well, maybe we could get another cone to fit inside of that cone to fit on top of that cone. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. All right, hey, we'll be back. Okay, I don't have much choice, but uh, we're going to give something a try here and. Uh, what we're going to do is go ahead and put uh, put a 60 degree co interior cone here and flat on that end and see if we can put it in the on the uh, bell center and just press up against the uh, the hub and uh, 
hopefully that'll give us what we want. Uh, I can't guarantee that, but uh, it'll be fun trying. Let's put our little uh, Let's see, what can we use here? We can use that one. Probably, we'll be at it for hours, but uh, hey, that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Okay, so we've cut our internal cone and we've cut a flat on that surface and we put the cone up against here and put the flat up against there and we just might have something. Whether we do or not for sure, I don't know. And what I'm doing is I'm slowly turning the um, the tailstock wheel in um, to, to snug it down and rotating at the same time just to kind of settle everything in where it wants to settle and it keeps actually moving in let me uh, yeah everything looks pretty good tighten everything up a bit All right, let's spin it and see what it comes out like. You can see it, but that rim is definitely not running true. Let me uh, bring you around here. I mean, it's close, <laughs> but I'm guessing. I'm guessing this thing saw some miles, and it's gotten uh, it's gotten a little beat up over the years. So, but we're gonna let's we'll just kind of generally mic out the the brake drum and see how close we are there. I'm gonna swing you around again here. not going to be able to get anything super accurate because this thing is so rusty but we could get somewhere we can get close okay so we want to get close huh we'll take our little mini boring bar head off okay this could work. Which way does it go? It goes this way. So we want to bring it around upside down. So as I said, this is not going to give us anything exact but it's going to tell us whether it's it's completely out of whack or it's doing okay i don't know if you can see that it looks like we're out by about 20. oops maybe more yeah so maybe we can just kind of knock it into place Give that a try. Mm 
Well, quick work. Okay, now we're about 20 out. Now we're about 10. So that's not bad. Now we're about seven. Three, I can live with three. And I believe that these drums are steel drums rather than cast iron. We're gonna have a look at that pretty quick and see. All right, let's see what we can do. So we have to be able to start here and go in to here and see what we can come up with. Let's snug this down, crack this, trade it out for the boring bar. like it's going to be just about right. We'll have to bring the bar in a little bit or we could actually, now that I think of it, without messing too much. Now the question is, well I'm telling you, this has taken us to the absolute limit of this lathe. I think we're getting a full cleanup now. Let's do this. Let's back you up. And then we'll just bring the camera in. Looks like we got maybe just a bit of a skip out toward the end here. So this next turn we're going to uh, we're going to turn it on very fine and just take a few thousands and I think we're going to be clean. All right, well, we had to go into town and get a big washer and then now we're going to uh, bore that washer out until it fits the, the threaded part of the shaft because we were, uh, it just wasn't working. So. We'll, uh, we'll bore this out and then uh, I'll show you how, how I answered the question.
All right, so this is the back side of the hub, and uh, there's the wheel bearings. So uh, the problem was is if you'll look, you'll see that there's really nothing to grab onto or nothing to bottom up against. Now I wanted to bottom up against this, but there's these four uh, rivets in the way, and plus this is a bit rounded, so it's not accurate. But this one little edge right there, I could bottom up against, but I couldn't because I had the aluminum chips to protect the threads and so it just kept pushing past the aluminum and never get squared up so I went and bought the the washer and we'll slide that over the top of that it bottoms out on that one little dinky edge and gives me a little bit more shoulder to work from so we'll put that on the lathe and see what we can do okay if you look in there you'll see that the the washer sitting right there and it's bottoming out on the um, on the jaws of the chuck and uh, the jaw the jaws of the chuck if we spin it a little bit have the aluminum chips in there to, to keep an eye on there or I mean keep an eye on to uh, to keep from messing up the threads so we got the aluminum chips and we got the washer we, we're hanging on by our the skin of our teeth but it's not a problem because we're set up I'm gonna swoop you over here a little bit with um, this pressure system and you saw that earlier now it seems to be working it seems to be squared up pretty well and I'm gonna move you out of the way just a little bit more let's see if we can get you up so you can see something all right we're gonna come back okay now we've got the drum and we're gonna just kind of give it a quick spin, see what, see what, just visually. Still pretty floppy, but I think we can straighten that out just by cut, putting a, putting a uh, indicator on there and uh, you know tapping it around till it uh, till it gets squared up. So let's go get an indicator. Here we are. If you look at that, that drum is all over the map. Same with the uh, same with the rim, but we are centered with the with the hub, and that's where we want to be. Uh, we want to be able to cut that brake uh, the brake pad or the brake uh, drum centered with the hub. So I think we're going to cut it to see what we come up with. clean surface there. Let's spin it up a little bit and we're going to just put uh, a little bit of sandpaper to it just to kind of smooth it out a bit. Okay, number two is done. Let's get a rag. And just kind of wipe it off a little bit. It's odd stuff. I mean, I think it's, you know, it's got curls like steel, and yet it has powder like cast iron. 
I'm almost positive it's um, it's steel because it is a formed shape here, which makes it uh, better in some ways. Uh, certainly better in uh, I can cut it thinner here uh, than cast iron because cast iron, you know, when you get it certain thinness, that it just kind of falls apart. But the other side of it is, is cast iron holds up to the uh, to the heat much better. Uh, but you know, we're talking about a, a 1934 Austin. I think it's a little four cylinder. It might go top speed, uh, you know, 30 miles an hour. It's got uh, mechanical brakes. There's no hydraulics at all in this. So uh, there's not a whole lot of braking going on. So uh, I'm guessing that there's not a whole lot of high speed stuff going on either. All right, we'll take this one off and uh, put the next one on. I might actually go back to the first one and take a measurement from this center hub here because this is really where our centering is. Um, and, uh, you know, you've got to get centered to that shaft or else you end up with lumpy brakes. Now, probably that's the least of their worries. But, uh, you know, from my point of view, I want to make it uh, as good a job as I possibly can. And this one was a stretch. All right, we're going to take it apart and we're going to say uh, adios. This was a fun project. Uh, I, I got two more to do, of course, but uh, nice little short well, good here. Good morning, Nick Collier here again. And uh, uh, I, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night thinking about this issue here. And uh, I, you know, I realized, yes, I may have gotten it accurate, but if I don't have it really accurate, look at that leaf. If I don't have it really accurate, uh, those brakes are going to jump around when they hit the brakes. And if you have all, all four wheels jumping around at one time, you got a lot of vibration. So, yes, I probably got it accurate, but I need to test it. So I think what I have to do is I have to build a cone for this end and use the cone on this end, put these together, and, and then test it and see if it's got uh, con uh, concentric. So, um, so we're going to be doing a little machine work now. I don't want to tear this blade down, so we're going to work over on the little south bin and make our cones and uh, and come up with some kind of a way of testing my cut and see if it's clean. So, okay, so yesterday I cut this piece here that was, you know, marginal at best. You know, it, it, it might have worked and, I, and we're going to test that out later and see. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's really not what was necessary, what was needed. And so I, you know, I just was looking around for something else to use and I happened to find uh, <clears throat> this adapter and I went wow and you know I've been collecting these oddball uh, adapter uh, Morris taper adapter pieces and other stuff for uh, years I probably had this one for 10 or 15 years I've never used it and I looked at it and I went geez that might actually work so I put it in here and sure enough it works there and that gives me the extension I need and it's like wow cool but the problem is is that it's got a huge hole in it got an, I think a number four uh, taper and I'm like oh darn okay so I'm looking around to see if I can come up with something else and I happen to run into another adapter and again I haven't I've probably never used this and it fits bang that comes down to a number three, which means that I can put my uh, my bell center in, and I have that extra extension that I need. I've got more extension than I need. Let's back this thing up a little bit. Wow, cool, huh? I mean, all this stuff was laying around for years. I never saw it. And uh, now we get to use it. So, in this case, the bell center is just going to hit that thing just about right. So we're all set on this side. Now it's the other side that I'm worried about. Because the other side sits on a three-jaw chuck. And I know this three-jaw chuck is uh, almost brand new. 
Well, in fact, it was brand new when I bought it. It had been sitting around for a long time, but it was new in a box. And, uh, but, you know, the tape, the, the uh, chips, everything changes just slightly the, uh, the measurement. So I'm, you know, I was a little worried about that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a plug of, of uh, steel and I'm going to taper that steel at 60 degrees. And then I'm going to put the, uh, put the uh, uh, hub in between that. So then I'll have center, center, and I'll have a good, uh, a good true uh, measurement. So then we can measure the hub and see what's going on. So. Next thing I have to do is go find a piece of metal that I can uh, that I can taper the center. Okay, so this was a very complicated process. Uh, we came in, and because I didn't want to break down the the setup on the big lathe, we came in with the small lathe. Oh, I must have spent an hour making this cone. Brought it back over to the big lathe. Took the uh, took the uh, boring bar brought it around the back side, turned this thing backwards, and trued it up in the big lathe, just like a skim cut, just to get us true. So then we bring this new series of, uh, of adapters in, into play, and we've got two points that are exactly across from one another. And that gives us what we want to cut our wheel hubs. Now in this case, this wheel hub already got cut yesterday, but we're not sure, and it looks like, I'm not sure this is going to work. Nope, we're going to have to put the, uh, the other, uh, the bell center in. Okay, we got that loosened up. Now we put the bell center in. Oops, we're going to have to pull this back a bit. There we go. And that's going to adapt to the front wheels, which have a bigger, bigger uh, hole for the hub. And let's see how that pulls in. Yeah, that's going to hit just fine. Let me, uh, this isn't hitting right though. So it looks like we've gone a little closer. Not too bad. There we go. Now, uh, I've got a floating center, so uh, I can test the, the, how close it is. And we'll go ahead and do that. Let's bring in a indicator. Put it up against the brake hub. Lock it in place. Uh, back it up just a little bit. All right. Bring it in. And let's see, now yesterday I did the, uh, the other method, which uh, could have worked good, I don't know. So let's give it a try. And it can't be that perfect. So there's something going on here. Maybe it isn't quite hitting. There we go. Oops, back up a little bit. Okay. Now, well, as far as I can tell, what are we about? Let's see. We're about five off, which isn't bad. Um, so that other method worked pretty well. But five off is five off. And at 30 miles per hour, you hit the brakes uh, at five off. And all four of them, if they were off sync, they'll start to 
all of them will start to lump. And, uh, and that, not that it would be dangerous, but that it would be um, not very comfortable. So we're going to take that extra five off of here and know that we're going to be perfectly accurate. All right. How's our bit doing? It's pretty good. Let me uh, just give it a, a kiss here with a diamond uh, sharpener. There we go. And maybe a little bit this way. All right. So, bring it in. And by the way, that's five off uh, in one position of the brake drum. Who knows if, how that brake drum was. It could have been just a little bit askew and it would be five off here, but all the way inside it might be 10 off. So I just want to true this up and make it right. Um, so the other thing we have to do is come in with a, uh, another C-clamp. This is like a C-clamp uh, extravaganza. Uh, we bring the clamp in like this. We turn it like that. How did that work? There it goes. That. And then bring the clamp all the way in, nice and snug. And this is my double leg dog, or <laughs> lathe dog. So this keeps the, the uh, you know, because both of these sit, are sitting on free centers. So without this here, this whole thing would just float. The lathe would turn up, turn, start up, but this thing I could grab onto and it would just sit there and, and rotate around. So this keeps it from rotating around. And uh, we're going to kick it into gear. And I think we're going to go ahead and start it up and see what we got. Make sure we're good. Let's get rid of some of this garbage here. Now, this is definitely a steel um, hub, which is very interesting. If you know anything about cars, I don't think there is one brake hub anywhere, modern brake hub, that's made out of steel. It's made, they're all made out of uh, cast iron. So let's spin this around, make sure we're clear. How come we're not spinning? There we go. Oh. We're not spinning because we're hitting. All right, there we go. All right, we're clear. And put it in gear, turn it on. Let's start spinning. Because this is uh, this is kind of a cool part. Now look at the back side of the hub there. You're going to see where this is hitting. And I think you know it's barely hitting now. So I'm going to come back in and bring it back. Maybe let's bring it. Okay, we got this one cleaned up and it looks like it's coming out pretty good. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and back up my uh, carriage. Let's get a little piece of sandpaper in there and just kind of 
sand it up a little bit and uh, smooth. Nice. Okay, now we just take the whole thing back apart again, and uh, this is our third hub that we've done. So, uh, one more and we're home free.